Hi, I'd like to welcome you into a time of worship. I love the series we're in. It's called Worship to Weekday. It's a 12 session series. And in it, we're giving you, equipping you with tools, habits, and resources to effortlessly connect with God on a daily basis. See, because sometimes our worship is about an hour a week whenever you're watching online and we don't benefit from the peace of the presence of the one who is our deliverer throughout the other 167 hours of our week. And so I wanna help equip you with these resources. And if we haven't met before, my name is Drake Peterson. I am the student pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church here in Lakewood, Colorado. And so as we begin our service, we begin it in the one, in the name of the one who is our deliverer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue in worship, we have this opportunity to just get honest with God, to just tell him the times when, man, I, I know you've delivered me in the past, God, but I don't know if you can do it again. When we're faced with these obstacles, sometimes we can have our hearts melt in fear. And so in those times, we're hoping to change into a different attitude towards God, a gratitude attitude, one that says, God, I know you've delivered me in the past. I'm looking at your past faithfulness so I can trust that you can and you will do it again. So this time I'd invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for seeing our pain, for hearing it and doing something about it, for looking at the obstacles that are in front of us and drying them up, removing them from us so that we can cross over freely to have our feet stand firmly on dry ground. Lord, you are the God who parts seas, who dries up rivers to deliver your people. Lord, we ask humbly that you would do it again. Help us to trust you and see you more fully. In Jesus' precious name. And it's in Jesus' precious name that I have the good news, the opportunity to deliver to you that your sin is forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Whatever's been holding you back, whatever you've been hiding in fear from, have confidence today, knowing that if God has done it in the past, he can and he will do it again. He'll deliver you even from death itself. In Jesus' name. And having heard this absolution, this profession of grace and forgiveness, we have the opportunity to hear from God through his word. Let's take a look at Joshua chapter four, verses one through seven, where they set up these memorial stones to remember the ways that God has delivered them. And at this time, he just dried up the Jordan River so they could pass through on dry ground. Joshua chapter four. When the whole nation finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people one from each tribe and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord, your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of Israel to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be memorial to the people of Israel forever. This is God's word. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue in this series, Worship to Weekday and bringing God's presence into your life more, the presence of the one who is the deliverer, not just one hour when we worship, but the other 167 hours of your week, I want to introduce this session a question. Do you remember what you had for dinner last night? And, and maybe for some of you, you forgot to brush your teeth. Maybe it's still on your breath. I don't know. Hopefully not. But it's a little tough to remember. And if I ask, well, what about last Tuesday? Uh, no, I don't really know. It's, it can be tough to remember even simple things like that. 
let alone blessings from God. And so if you're like me and you don't necessarily have the best memory, what you can do is keep up a gratitude journal. And what this does for you, as it's done for me for the past six years as I've been doing this, is it gives you a daily remembrance from maybe last night or last Tuesday of the blessings that God has given you. And by recording these blessings, by writing them down, they will help you in this gratitude journal to record God's past deliverance, remembering and feeling the gratitude, even the midst of fearing the future of whatever obstacles in front of you to help you trust the Lord more. He's done it before and he can do it again. See, because sometimes when we fear the future, it can be a sign that maybe we're doubting God's ability a little bit. And when we're doubting it, that's exactly when we need to look back at the past for hope of saying God's done it before. And actually in our text today, that's exactly what Joshua does when he sets up these memorial stones to remember, hey, God, he got even dried up the Jordan River. He's able to do everything that he promises for us. So let me give us a little bit of a roadmap of where we're going today. Uh, before we get into that text, we're going to look at the context a little bit of Joshua chapters one to three, this miracle of parting the Jordan River, just like God parted the Red Sea in the past. And we're also going to look at the text of Joshua four with the stones and the remembrance that God is our deliverer in past, present, and future. See, because by recording these past deliverances, it builds up this trust that he is faithful to deliver us in all times. So before exploring this gratitude journal to interact with God daily, let's take a look at the context. So if you got your Bibles, I would recommend pulling out uh, them and going to Joshua chapter one. And we're going to look at chapters one through three first. But before we look at Joshua, a uh, quick overview, right? We're in the sixth book of the Bible, right after the Pentateuch, the first five books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And right at the end of Deuteronomy, Right, the main character of this is Moses. And Moses goes up on Mount Nebo and he's overlooking the promised land. He sees this land that God has promised to deliver his people, but he's not able to enter it because of some past disobedience. And so the book ends in Deuteronomy and picks up in Joshua with kind of a dark note of that Moses, the servant of the Lord, was dead. And that's significant because but you think, well, well, God's been working through Moses. Does that mean his promises are going to end? And so there's this fear of the future and maybe people's hearts are starting to melt within them. And yet God keeps his promises. He still delivers. And this is what he tells us. He says, just as I've been with Moses, so also I will be with you, Joshua. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, if you had to pick a confirmation verse, some of you might've picked this one in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's Joshua chapter one. Let's look at chapter two quick. And in it, Joshua sends two spies into Jericho. Some of you might remember Rahab, the prostitute. She was a faithful woman of God. And she was because she hid these two spies who were God's people up on her roof for three days. And by the way, when you read in scripture, something like three days, uh, try to think of the motif. Where else have I seen three days in scripture? That's right. Jesus was buried in the grave for three days before rising again. So they're up on the roof with Rahab for these three days. And in that time, they have this fascinating conversation where Rahab remembers God's past deliverance. And she says this, I know that God has given you this land. He's been faithful in the past and I believe he's going to do it again. And so the people's hearts around Rahab, her people, their hearts were melting within them because God's people weren't even here yet. The Ark of the Covenant wasn't even here yet. And yet they're panic struck because they know when God promises something, he follows through. And the later application is God's going to deliver you. Even in the midst of your fear of not being sure about the situation, he can still do it again, because this is the really interesting note that Rahab says, right? She knew about God's past faithfulness because he even parted the Red Sea. He split it in the middle. And I have a question for you. Did you know that's not the only time that God parts 
these waters, right? We also see it in the Jordan River, which we're about to see. So after these spies are lowered down through the city wall where Rahab was, and Rahab leaves a scarlet cord, so she will later be delivered by God because of her faithfulness in response to how God has been faithful to her. They leave, they come back to Joshua, and they report everything that they see. And Joshua says to the people, hey, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow God will do wonders in the land. And he says that the Levitical priests are to take up the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders, right? The one that Moses had given and given the 10 commandments, they place them in that ark, in that chest. They're going to take it up on their shoulders and cross through the Jordan River. And so this wonder, this miracle is a sign to show that God is with you and that he will give you the land. And let's take a look at that land in which God was going to give some of the geography around it. And so this is fertile land, right? If you're here in Lakewood, Colorado, if you just drive 20 minutes west of here, what are you going to hit? The foothills, the soil changes. That's driving 20 minutes. In Israel, if you walk 20 minutes, you're going to see that same sort of soil change. And in that, we see this major shift where this land that God has promised to give is, is flowing with milk and honey. It is prosperous. It is land that's fought over. And so that's the land that God's going to graciously give his people. And this is all happening during harvest season where the Jordan overflows all of its banks. And about 20 miles upstream, when the Jordan River is cut off, 20 miles upstream at this city called Adam, the water is going to pile up in these heaps. And when they do cross, this is not a little creek or a little stream. Right? And you're going, well, maybe the people could have just kind of put things up over their head and marched through. This is a huge miracle because it's probably about two miles wide that the people are going to hastily cross through and about 120 feet deep. This is a big river at this time, according to a lot of experts. And the point is, it's a big river. It really happened. I mean, this is actually water from that same Jordan River, right? This Jordan River that they cross later that Jesus was baptized. And I just want to show you, this is a real place. These are real waters that God parts. And he really still parts and removes obstacles from us today as we move confidently into his promises. And so the miracle is that the waters were completely cut off, right? 20 miles upstream and piled up in that heap and the people walked through hastily. <laughs> and as soon as the priest's feet touched dry ground, the waters returned and overflowed. So all the people around this probably heard and saw this miracle. And at this time, Joshua was so amazed, so deeply entrenched in gratitude that he never wanted to forget this moment. And so he said, take 12 men of each tribe. This is in our text now in Joshua 4. Take 12 men of each tribe and take a stone from exactly where the Levitical priests were standing with the ark. And so they hoisted these stones up on their shoulder, laid them down in camp, and Joshua raised them up to be a memorial forever. Let's pause right there. This is a lot of context. This is what's going on in Joshua, some miracles. Why this text? Why mention Rahab? Well, Rahab pointed out something interesting. God has done it before and he can do it again. God has parted the Red Sea. And this is a beautiful painting by my sister, Holland. He's done this before. So of course he can do it again. If he says he's going to give you this land, he's done this, he can do that. And so this is, a repeat miracle, a type that happens again. And so in this, we see Rahab showing how God delivered you from the Egyptians. And why this pile of stones? Well, if you remember the Jordan River crossing, God gave deliverance also from the wilderness. In this miracle, God delivered the people. And when he did, he said, I want this to be a sign among you, a memorial forever. That when your children ask, what do these stones mean to you? You can tell them God cut off the Jordan River to deliver his people. If he delivered them in the past, he can do it in the present and the future. And not just in your present and your future. He's done it in your ancestors past with the Red Sea. He's done it in your present. And he's going to do it not just in your future, but your children's future. And so I need you to communicate to them that I am deliverer of all time, past, present, future, and your children's future. 
I am your God. I want you to remember the things that I've done for you and well up into this gratitude, into this trust in me that I can do it again. Problem is, and this is kind of shocking, they kind of forget. And you go, well, how could they forget? I mean, this was a huge deal that God dried up the whole Jordan River, right? That whole chunk of it. And yet we see that it happens. And when it does, whenever they're faced with a new obstacle, not this two mile river across, but whatever that is, they start to fear again. Their heart starts to melt within them and they start going, God, I don't know if you can do this. I don't know if you can deliver me from this. And they forget that God is the deliverer. And they go, that's kind of weird. Let's back up for a second. It's kind of weird that we think that because we tend to forget too, don't we? We go, well, we haven't seen rivers parted. We haven't seen manna rain from heaven. We haven't seen the walls of Jericho fall like they're about to. Yes, that's, that's true. But we also have God's word. And, and we also have this recording of all of the blessings God has given us in Christ that he's delivered us from death itself through what he's done on the cross and in his resurrection. Okay, well, that's, that's a fair point. And then we go, well, why, why do we forget? And so in this time of forgetting, we need these reminders. And so just as the stones were reminders for the Israelites, gratitude journaling can be a reminder for us. So let's transition a little bit into talking about gratitude journaling. Now that we've seen Joshua remembered God's blessings in the text, let's see how we can remember the blessings that God has given us. So this positivity journal, I would recommend, you know, you can do this out publicly. And, you know, even if you're within your home, if you're just recording this simply, your children might come up to you and ask, well, what do these things mean to you? Just like they asked Joshua, what do these stones mean? You can say, well, maybe not that God cut off the Jordan River, or whatever river's here in Colorado for you, but he cut off whatever was in front of me. And I passed through and stood firmly on dry ground. And I just want to remember the ways that God has helped me, so that I can build up this trust, this relationship with him in my gratitude for him. And what I love about it is it's perspective giving. And you can start off kind of like I did at the beginning where I was recording, you know, just a handful of a few things, basically a blank page into the following month. You start seeing, well, it starts filling up a lot more. And even if you're just recording one good thing per day, by the end of the month, you have 30 good blessings or... <laughs> By the end of the month, if you're writing down three things, well, you have 90, 90 blessings or 10 a day, then you're having 300 blessings. And if you're writing down 10 a day for a year, then you have over 3,600 blessings throughout that year, let alone other years that you might be doing this. And then you go, well, today's been a rough day. Well, it's been a good week. Well, today's been really tough because it's been a good month. Well, you know, the 2022 was pretty awful. Okay, well, there were you know, over 3,000 good things that God still gave you that you're even able to record. And that's helpful because we don't want to just be toxically positive and not considering some of the difficult things and the evil that is present in this world. Because uh, as I've mentioned, I've uh, recently been to a family funeral. And in that, I'm, I'm not just not recording anything for that day. That day was actually more full. So I was going, well, yeah, this is a terrible thing. And I acknowledge that. But man, let me tell you something. At that funeral, my family came together. I saw people in my family that I haven't seen in years and got to give them a hug and tell them I love them. And people that don't know the gospel in my family, they got to hear how much Jesus just loves them and how he rose for them and how they can rise too. I mean, that's a lot of blessings even in those dark times. And speaking of which, I find uh, highlighting with colors to be really helpful. And pink is one of those colors that I'll use on those difficult days to indicate, well, there is something bad that happened, but God still worked for good in those evil times. And you might be thinking, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'd have something this small. Uh, well, I tend to write really small and people would tell me that. And so I got a, I got a bigger one. And uh, in the bigger one, I, well, I, I continued to write really small. <laughs> And uh, this is just one example of how it can be done. Uh, the blue, for instance, for me, was a helpful way to remember the people, the green, the locations, 
Uh, I'd track how many pages I was reading a day. And uh, I would do these little doodles and sketches. And in those, you can be reminded, oh yeah, no, I went to a Broncos game. Oh yeah, that's right. I got to go to this other game. You know, I get to see this family. I got to go here. I see Sporky from Toy Story 4. That was a while ago. But you're able to be reminded of these blessings whenever they are. And you can also put quotes along the side. Uh, one quote that I just wrote down yesterday, uh, you know, which of course can also be done from scripture and memorization. One quote I wrote from yesterday was actually just from my sister talking to her on the phone and uh, she was in heaven the best day. And she told me, you know, I love talking to you. I said, well, <laughs> why is that? And she goes, well, cause I feel like warm and fuzzy on the inside. I feel really cared for and loved and just safe. It's like, man, that just made my day. Of course, I'm going to go write that down right now. So those things, those uplifting things to help carry you through and say, well, God gave me that sibling. God gave me the ability to work, to get the money, to go get those tickets, to go to the Broncos game, whatever. All blessings come from him. And so that leads us into gratitude. As far as when to do these things, uh, you can pick morning or evening. Uh, A few blessings in the morning research shows that that can do wonders for your mental health and what sort of state that you're in emotionally. Uh, personally, I just, I would keep these with me throughout my entire day when I was in college and just write things th- out throughout. Uh, you can also have backstops and say, hey, if I haven't done it by the end of the day, I put it on my pillow at night and I'm going to remember, eh, I should probably do that. So those can be helpful ways to stay consistent. You can just, again, just write down one good thing and that'll help you remember God's blessings. And it just helps you look for the little things that are good. Oh, somebody held a door open because our minds so easily and naturally focus on the bad things, the difficult things. And if you see a really good season, you can go, well, that was a good month. Let me replicate and find what parts of that were really great. How was I connecting with God so well? And of course you can do it digitally through Google Docs or Evernote or whatever ways you find that you're already using these tools and just integrate them. Another option if journaling is not so much your thing is you can have uh, what Tim Ferriss calls the jar of awesome. And in this jar, uh, you can write down uh, something great that happened to the day and put it in the jar. Or you can even put in a prayer request and say, Lord, I really hope you're willing to deliver me in this situation. And what's even cooler is if you do a prayer request that's unanswered and then you crumple it up, put it in there, pull it out months later and you go, oh, of course God did that. He's my deliverer. And so I had confidence in advance, just like Rahab had saying, that's surely going to go into the hand of the Lord. He's able to do immeasurably more than we could ever hope or imagine. And so on a sheet of paper today, I would just encourage you to write down, what are some ways that God has delivered me? Try to write down one, three, maybe even five of just, here are some ways that God has delivered me, uh, maybe in big ways throughout my life or just a few small ways today or in this last week. That helps us well up into gratitude and remember God's past blessings to carry us into future trust so that we can know that just as God brought them from one land into the promised land, how he dried up the obstacles in their life, he dries them up in yours that you can cross through freely on dry ground and stand firm, knowing that just as God said, just as I've been with Moses, I'll be with you, Joshua. He means that for us because Jesus reiterates that in the great commission, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. And then we can go, yes, I am strong and courageous. I do like that confirmation verse. And we can cling on to it a little bit more tightly in gratitude saying, God's delivered me before. He can do it again. And so I can remind myself and my kids, and I don't have any kids, but whatever uh, sphere of influence you have, right? Those people that are watching your faith, you can share that with them and tell them, this is the reason for the hope that I have. And hopefully by writing these things in the page, the ink goes into your heart, into gratitude for the Lord. So may this journal or jar of awesome be to you as the stones were to the Israelites, a reminder of the mighty signs that God has done among them and you and that he can and will do it again. He's absolutely going to do what he says. Just look at what he's done. In Jesus' mighty name with God is our deliverer. Amen. If you would, I'd invite you to pray with me at this time. Lord Jesus, thank you 
Thank you for the blessings that are so innumerable in our lives. Even in the dark times, even in the hard times, we can have gratitude in the midst of it. We can have others, unbelievers and children and those around us look at our lives and say, how do you have this gratitude? How do you look so different? We can say, well, God is my deliverer. He's my hope. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my everything. He's done it before. And even though this situation is scary and my heart feels like melting within me, I can have confidence knowing he will do it again. And so Lord, please give us this daily reminder that you are with us. Help us to wake up in the morning and write down three good things that happened to us. Help us be in your presence. Open our eyes to your blessings that are all around us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray also the words that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen.